Oh, the Gulf of Mexico. <laughs> and now for the judge's report. To the winner of tonight's quiz goes the price of a tour around the entire United States over the lines of the world's largest bus system. Score of 100, Mr. J. Pericles Sims. This will give the professor an opportunity to check up on his American history at first hand. Wait a minute. What's this? Well, tonight our sponsor is awarding a special prize. Another tour to the person who came out last in our contest with a perfect score of zero, Miss Shirley Courtney. They figure Miss Courtney has a lot to learn about this amazing America. Oh, Mr. Sims. Oh, we won, didn't we? Life is full of surprises, isn't it? Oh, you'll tell me all about everything on the trip? My dear young lady, that would scarcely be possible. You mean you won't explain things to me? No, I, I mean that you won't be there. Oh, pardon me, is this seat taken? No. Oh, well, hello. Well, I didn't know you were taking this bus. Life is full of surprises, don't you think? It's an annual custom here. They dress up in Dutch clothes and scrub the streets and sidewalks getting ready for tulip time. It's a custom transported from the Netherlands. Yeah, I wish I could get a pair of those wooden shoes. Well, there's the old shoe carver right over there. He works at it all year round with the same tools his great-grandfather used. He uses poplar wood, seasoned so the shoes won't crack. He has to shape them for rights and lefts. Only I warn you, you better get them to wear them because you'll pair the heavy socks. Well, I guess I won't try. Uh-oh, it's time for our next bus. Well, goodbye. Goodbye? Uh-huh, you see, uh, I've changed my mind. I've made arrangements to stay over until tomorrow so I, uh, so I can go see the Dutch Museum. Museum? Uh-huh. Oh, well, I love museums. I think I'll stay too. There's another bus at 12.15? Yes, sir. Also at 3 and 6. Uh-huh. Well, uh, the tanks. I'll take this one. Well, are you sure my new bag will be all right in there? Oh, yes. These compartments are weatherproof. Your baggage is locked in. The dust is locked out. Your bag is out of the way here until you need it. Well, here's my coat. You can take your wrap in the coach if you wish. you find a small overhead rack for it. Thank you, sir. Well, I thought you were taking the 1215. I changed my mind, just like you did. You wouldn't be trying to avoid me, would you, mister? Well, uh, well that is, I... I that would be a low-down Yankee trick. Besides, I'm looking forward to seeing Boston. And I want you to tell me all about it. Here's the first thing everybody wants to see in Boston. The steeple of the Old North Church, where the signal lanterns were hung. Oh, I know. One is by land and two is by sea. That's right. And here's the home of Paul Revere. Paul? Oh, well, where'd he keep his horse? Probably in his garage. You want to hear about Paul Revere, lady? Huh? Paul Revere was born in 1735 and died at the age of 83. He was married to wife and had 14 children. In 1775, when the British were coming, he rode with Daniel Prescott and William Dawson on the countryside. That is how you come to hear the midnight ride of Farnsdale. We thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, boy. That was very nice. This is Lexington's Village Green, where the farmers gathered whom Paul Revere had roused from their beds. Outnumbered 20 to 1, these Minutemen rallied at Concord Bridge and fired the shot heard round the world. Is this really the same bridge? It looks the same, although it's concrete, whereas the original was made of wood. Know where you are now? No, but I like it. It's the Wayside Inn, the famous old tavern that Longfellow wrote about. George Washington used to stop here 
And Lafayette did, too. Oh, look, that building's spilling over. <laughs> That's the old grist mill. It still runs every day. Which reminds me, we better run, too. Or we'll miss the brother. Have a Greyhound post house. Oh, come on, I'm starving. Good idea. This is the last stop before New York. I'm so excited. Is this showing up New York? Broadway's just around the corner. My, Greyhound stations always seem to be in the center of things. Tonight we'll see Times Square. Well, there it is. Over there is the biggest electric sign in the world. I assume you know what that is. Oh, of course. That's the Statue of Liberty. It's the largest statue of modern times. It took eight years to build it. Oh, there's so much to see in New York. Don't you just love to ride on top of these Fifth Avenue buses and look at all the stores and everything? There's Radio City. There's the tallest building in the world, the Empire State. Two stories. Hmm, can we go up? Well, yes. It'll give us a good view of the city from up there. My, did you ever see such a mess of masonry? And just to think, I heard the Indians sold all that island for $24. If you think the Indians were hoodwinked, you may disabuse your mind. That same $24 at compound interest would be worth more now than all the real estate in New York. Well, hush my mouth. You know, I think history is just too fascinating. The way you tell it, I mean. Yep. Well, the sun's on my side. <laughs> what are you reading? I'm refreshing my memory on Washington. Uh -huh. He was a wonderful man, I guess. <laughs> George Washington himself laid the cornerstone of the Capitol. The 13 little columns up there in the cupola represent the 13 states when it was started. The 36 columns supporting the dome, can you guess what they represent? What? There were 36 states when it was finally completed. There are so many amazing things about this country, if people would only get out and discover them. The White House. I wonder if the president's home. No. Well, how do you know? They fly an American flag on that pole up there on the roof whenever he's at home. Past the east end of the White House, you can see the Washington Monument in the distance. Oh, yes. I don't want to leave Washington. Why don't you stay longer? You can get as many stopovers as you want on a bus trip. You can stay as long as you want. You said we had to leave in the morning. I said I had to leave in the morning. Is this seat taken, young man? No, it isn't. Are you traveling alone, too? Yes. Oh, uh, no. Well, that, that, that is... I, I... <laughs> Don't you know? Well, uh, not exactly. I like traveling alone, especially when I can go by bus. I have a married daughter living in New York and another one in Los Angeles. And you see, I can just visit both of them on one of those circle tour tickets. I can spend a few months. Doesn't cost very much. All oh, these greyhound folks are so considerate to old ladies like me. Uh, May I help you adjust your seat? No, oh, no, thank you, young man. It's so easy.
Yes. What time is That's right. You said you weren't coming. Well, you didn't think I'd let you come to see the nest. Right then, come on, if you came to see the bridge. Well, isn't that cute? Cute? But how did it ever get there? Nature carved it out of solid rock, 90 feet wide and 215 feet high. Thomas Jefferson bought it from King George III for $4.80. George Washington surveyed it, and you can see his profile in it. Well. If you look closely, the sky is his forehead, there's his nose, and mouth. Why, sure enough. Today, our Greyhound bus runs over the top of it. Mm. I still don't understand what carved it out. That stream. That little bitty branch it must have taken a right smart time. Millions of years. Nature's never in a hurry. She does things well, but slowly. Well, I know something slower than that. What? Oh, never mind. They certainly put their mountains out in the woods. We're in the Great Smokies. Volcanoes? No, they get their name from the peculiar haze that hangs over them, caused by the atmospheric conditions. They're the highest mountains in the east. Here's one of the most delightful old customs in America, the same square dancing that these mountain people have been doing for centuries. Good. These are the Soko Gap people who danced for the King and Queen of England when they visited Washington. Our buses down here in Jacksonville change color, don't they? This is another of Greyhound's connecting lines. We take it down through Florida. St. Augustine, the oldest town in the United States. These are the old city gates once the only entrance to the city. And this is the oldest house. But what are the different flags for? Those are the four different flags under which people have lived in this house ever since 200 years before the Revolutionary War. My goodness, that is old. Wow, we're right out over the ocean. That's right. Here's where our bus goes to sea. They call it the Overseas Highway to Key West. It crosses the Coral Island every mile or so. We're coming to one of them now. Lovely and romantic looking. We seem so far away from everything. That's one of the charms of the Florida Keys. The old pirates used to think so too. They used to sail over here from the Spanish Main, plunder a rich merchantman, and then slip in among these coves to elude pursuit. Oh, maybe we can hunt for buried treasure. It's being done. And tomorrow we'll be on the beach at Miami. Miss Courtney, if you're going to take that swim. Oh, yes. Won't you join me? No, thank you. Well, all right. But don't go away. I'll be right back. Andy Jackson, the hero of New Orleans. This is Jackson Square. It used to be the old public square. And yonder is the St. Louis Cathedral. Near it, Pirate's Alley. It still looks spooky. Here's a sight that really fascinates me. The old Napoleon house. The real Napoleon? Yes. It was prepared for him while he was in exile. He planned to escape and come to America, but he never did. Strange to relate, the Mississippi River at this point flows directly north. It does? Mm-hmm. And where's the Gulf of Mexico? 
Down that way, about 100 miles, that's one of the amazing things about the city of New Orleans. It's a city that's moving inland. Well, for heaven's sake, how? Well, it's the river. It keeps bringing down topsoil and dumping it in the Gulf, pushing the coastline farther and farther away from the city each year. Forevermore. Go these cute places we stopped, don't Pastor? Their local color is a definite contribution to our education, as well as our comfort. My, you know most everything, don't you, Professor? Except maybe about love. On the contrary, I know all about love. Objectively, of course. It's nothing but a romantic obsession. Overemphasized by young women, over-advertised by our current literature. Well. Yes, this is it, the Shrine of Texas Liberty. Texas used to be part of Mexico, you know. A little over 100 years ago, Texas revolted. Santa Ana, the Mexican dictator, came up with 4,000 soldiers. There were only 182 Texans in there, but they held out for two weeks, 182 against 4,000, and died to the man rather than surrender. That's why they say, remember the Alamo. Where did they get the name Alamo? Alamo is Spanish for cottonwood the kind of trees that used to shade the fort. Thank you. Hot enough for you? Oh, it sure is. I can hardly wait till I get back on. So tell me, please, so how do you keep it so nice and cool in the bus when it's so hot outside? We have air conditioning. The same unit keeps you cool in the summer and warm in the winter and changes the air in the bus completely every three minutes. What does that pin stand for? That's a safety emblem. I've driven eight years and over a quarter million miles without having even scratched a fender. Well, I declare, you must be the champion driver of the world. Oh, no. Greyhound has lots of drivers with records that long or better. Well, all aboard. Come on, Professor. Well, there it is, the most magnificent sight in America. The Grand Canyon sort of leaves you breathless, doesn't it? Tell me some things about it that I don't already know. Well, what do you already know? Well, I know it's a mile deep and four to 18 miles wide and a couple of hundred miles long. <laughs> I've been reading up on it. Well, did you know that for one thing, you are looking at a mountain range below ground? What? It's only another part of amazing America. Hundreds of those peaks down there are above the clouds, as you can see. They are higher than any mountains east of the Rockies, and yet they don't reach the level of the ground here. That's right. What's more, the canyon is so deep, there are four distinct climates from the bottom to the top. They are. We can go down there on the Bright Angel Trail, if you can ride a mule. Uh, I, I can try. Wait till I get to Hollywood and see all those handsome movie stars. There's no such city as Hollywood, not in California anyway. What? It's only a section of Los Angeles, but a very famous section with plenty to see. On the huge sound stages and the back lot, everything from a castle to an igloo. What's that building over there? Well, that's Terra, Scarlett O'Hara's old home in Gone with the Wind. Oh, it sure enough is. And that's the Atlanta Railroad Station. The one that was burned? Oh, it was burned before it was built. What? Just a movie trick. Well, now, why do the movies stick so close to this part of the country? Aside from the sunshine, the amazing thing is they can find scenery for almost any part of the world. 
from the Arctic to the tropics within a few miles of Hollywood. For instance, the atmosphere of old Spain along the Coast Mission Highway. This is Santa Barbara Mission, one of the chain of 21 missions built by the Franciscan Fathers in the 1700s. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. Father Unipero Serra traveled from one mission to another on muleback. The tracks made by his little mule have been widened into the broad highway over which our bus carries us so smoothly today. Now we're on the San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge, the biggest steel bridge in the world. It's also known as the bridge that dies through a tunnel. You can see it ahead there on Yerba Buena Island. Yerba Buena? Isn't that the name you said San Francisco used to be called? That's right. For many years, the town was called Yerba Buena before it was renamed in honor of the Franciscan saint. There's your first glimpse of the city. That's the famous ferry building over to the right. Here's where we get an airplane view from a bus. That's right. Fisherman's Wharf. All the little ships painted blue. That's an old superstition to assure a good day's catch. There's one of Uncle Sam's fast cruisers. Chinatown, the largest Chinese city outside the Orient. Notice the gilded pagoda roofs and ornamental balconies and fancy street lights. Mmm, I smell incense. What a funny street car. That's one of the old cable cars that runs up and down California Street. A lot of San Francisco streets are built right up the side of a hill. Well, they just push it around. Usually the passengers help, too. Do they have to push it uphill? Oh, no. The cable pulls it up. Want to ride? Let's. Here we go. Woo, this is fun. No, I don't want to leave San Francisco. You can always come back. This is the Golden Gate Bridge, isn't it? Yes. And this span we're on now is the longest single span in the world. Beyond the tunnel and upstate lies the Redwood Empire. Isn't that the most inspiring sight you ever saw? And there are hundreds of miles of this, right through these giant redwoods. It's so beautiful it hurts. I wish we could stop. We shall. There you are. Goodness, isn't there any top to it? Oh yes, 370 feet up. They are the tallest trees in the world, and between three and 4,000 years old. Over there's one big enough to hold a house. Do people really live in it? They could, but I presume they found it more profitable as a souvenir stand. Indian Teepee. Blackfeet Tribe. 
you'll see a lot of them from the sightseeing motor coaches that serve Glacier Park. Then, when we get to Money Glacier Hotel, we'll try the horses again. The American and Canadian flags crossed on his, uh, his rearview apron. Glacier Park and Waterton Lakes Park, just across the Canadian border, are known as the International Peace Park. Perhaps that's his way of expressing it. <laughs> it's a peace park and they're doing a war dance. <laughs> There's 60 of them here in Glacier National Park, all moving slowly down the mountainside. What do you mean that it's actually moving? Slowly, but they get there in time. Well, I reckon it's all right if it's got time to wait, but with me, I think I'd try to speed them up a little. Huh? Speed them up? But what for? Oh. Say, there's a spot I want to climb. Well, I'll go along, too. You will not. You couldn't make it. Professor? Must you call me Professor? Well, thanks, Terry. I didn't mean that... It... Well, if you've rested long enough, I will be on our way. Oh! Shirley! Oh, you called me Shirley. Are you hurt? Oh, it's my ankle. I guess I must have turned it or something. I'm sorry I was so stupid. Well, you're not stupid. I'm the one who's stupid. Why don't you follow me way up here? I wanted to come. Well, you can let go of me now. I'm I'm never going to let you go. Why, Professor? You, you called me Perry a little while ago. Oh, well, I... I'm in love with you. What? Well, that's it. I'm in love with you. Oh, you can't be. It's only an obsession. It's over-advertised. <laughs> it's not. It's wonderful. Why, it's the most amazing thing that ever happened to me. Oh, I guess we have about everything in America they have any place else. <laughs> oh, look, Perry. There's the biggest man I ever saw. That's the statue of Paul Bunyan, the Superman of the Lumberjacks, and his blue ox vase. Oh, I remember now. He chopped down whole forests with one swing of the axe. And the ox measured 42 axe handles and a plug of tobacco between the horns. <laughs> yes, it is beautiful. All these Minnesota lakes are. Well, why are you so set on seeing this one in particular? This is Lake Atasca. Oh, yes, but Terry. You come with me. You mean this is really the Mississippi River? It's the start of it. Come on, let's cross over. Now you can tell your folks you stepped across the Mississippi. Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh well, you can tell your folks you sat in it. <laughs> oh. oh, I'm so sorry this trip's about over. Aren't you, Perry? Well, we really do have to stop one before we can start another. 
I know this. Mm -hmm. I'm going home with you and meet your parents. And if they'll give their consent, I propose to ask you a very personal and momentous question. Just the other side there is Canada. I wonder if Greyhound would take us over there, too. Oh, yes. You can go by bus to Ottawa, Quebec, Montreal. All that wonderful country. You know something, Terry? What? Uh, I'll tell you later. What I was thinking... Yes, darling? I wish we could have as nice a trip to Canada as we just had over here. We can, and we will. Oh, honey, when? On our honeymoon?